this is Meredith from the Witty Gritty Paper Company and today I'm going to show you how to paint a crystal cluster using watercolors. So first things first, I'll tell you what you need supplies wise. For this watercolor tutorial you will need one sheet of 140 pound cold pressed watercolor paper, high adhesive masking tape, a pencil, two shades or three if you're feeling adventurous, of watercolor that complement each other, various small tipped brushes, and mixing dishes. So before anything else, we need to sketch out our crystals. I've already done mine here. Now if you don't feel confident freehanding it, I would recommend just typing in the words crystal drawing into Google Images. You'll find plenty of examples there. You could also just trace a picture from a gemstone book if that feels comfortable, whatever works for you. I drew mine in inspiration of this little note card I have. One thing to be very careful of is that your sketch isn't too dark. As soon as you paint over your pencil lines, you won't be able to erase them. So just be aware of that when you're drawing. Next, tape your sheet down to a secure surface, like a lap desk or even a piece of cardboard will work. Now this next step is optional, but I think it helps a lot, so I would definitely recommend doing it if you're a beginner or if you have the time. It's making a sample sheet of all the colors you're going to use. I made 11 different shades using three different watercolors and then assigned them all numbers. The colors I used were Blue Ultramarine, Cerulean Blue, and Antwerp Blue. Feel free to use another color scheme if you wish, just stay away from the yellows. Now if you have a hard time creating this many shades, you know, just try mixing colors together, adding more pigment or more water, or you know, simply using more colors. You know, this is all about fun, whatever, whatever works for you. Alright, on to the actual painting. The reason I assign my shades numbers is because I'm going to do this piece paint by number style. I've gone ahead and penciled in the numbers on my sketch. If this approach doesn't appeal to you and you just want to wing it, that's okay too. A good rule of thumb is making sure you don't put the same shade next to itself. Remember, this is all about practice and experimentation, so it's totally okay if it's not perfect the first time. Before you lay on any color, it's a really good idea to just wet your whole paper. Take your biggest brush and just have at it. This process is similar to pre-shrinking clothing. It just gets the paper ready to take on lots of color and moisture without curling nearly as much. Also, make sure you have finalized your sketch before you do this. Even water will make it difficult to erase your pencil lines. Wait for it to dry completely before adding any paint. If it's still cool to the touch, it is not dry. You can also use a hair dryer to speed up this process. Start filling in the sections with paint. Working from the outside inwards. Be extremely aware when you're painting sections that are right next to each other. If both are still wet, they will most likely bleed into each other and ruin your shades. Wait for them to dry or do other sections in the meantime.
You can also use a paper towel to dab away excess pools of paint or accidental color bleed, so don't forget about that. Handy watercolor painter's secret. Wait for the piece to dry completely. Then remove the masking tape slowly, pulling at a 90 degree angle. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments section. And if you'd like to see more of my work, just check out any of the links at the end of this video. Thanks so much for watching. Bye.